Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to another ATP video. Today we'll continue our discussion of Streptococcus species. As a quick review, just so you can keep the big picture in mind, gram positive cocci are either strep or staph. Do you remember how to differentiate them? That's right, staph is catalase positive while strep is catalase negative. Focusing on strep, all strep are either alpha, which is partial hemolysis, beta, which is complete hemolysis, or gamma with no hemolysis. Examples of some alpha and beta hemolytic organisms can be found in the previous videos. Today's discussion focuses on gamma hemolytic strep. We can divide them into two groups, enterococcal, also known as group D strep, and non-enterococcal, which includes strep bovis, also known as streptococcus gallolyticus. So this video focuses on three organisms, enterococcus fecalis, enterococcus fecium, and Streptococcus bovis. Gamma hemolytic strep are gram positive and catalase negative. Gamma hemolytic organisms show no hemolysis on blood agar, but both the enterococcal and non enterococcal species show gamma hemolysis. So, how can we differentiate between them? The answer is by using 6.5% sodium chloride, NaCl. If the organism grows in sodium chloride, then it's enterococcal species. And if no growth happens on sodium chloride, then it's non-enterococcal. In other words, strep bovis. So, non-enterococcal don't grow in sodium chloride. Now we will discuss the different organisms in more details. Now the common features of enterococcus fecalis and enterococcus fecium is that they're both facultative anaerobes in the GI tract. Since they are enterococcal, we know that they grow in 6.5 sodium chloride, and the gram stain appearance is described as diplococci in chain-like arrangement. Now for the virulence factors, enterococci are intrinsically resistant to penicillin G and cephalosporins, so we should think about vancomycin, but the issue is many times enterococcus are resistant to vancomycin. We call these vancomycin-resistant enterococci. You may have seen them written as VRE. It's important to understand what happens at the molecular level with VRE. What happens in vancomycin-resistant enterococci is that the bacteria acquires the VAN gene, which changes the structure of the peptidoglycan cell wall from D-alanine to D-lactate. This means that vancomycin can no longer bind and inhibit the peptidoglycan cell wall synthesis, therefore nullifying the effect of the antibiotic. Patients who are infected by vancomycin-resistant enterococcus are at increased risk of nosocomial infections, subacute endocarditis, UTI, and cholecystitis. Now back to Streptococcus bovis, these are the non-enterococcal gamma hemolytic strep. And remember, non-enterococcus does not grow in 6.5 sodium chloride. The main virulence factor for Streptococcus bovis is the presence of pili that mediate binding particularly to collagen and biofilms. Clinically, there are really mainly two things that you need to remember regarding Streptococcus bovis. It can cause endocarditis via bacteremia, and it's associated with colon cancer. So a common test question will describe someone with Streptococcus bovis endocarditis and ask about the next investigation that you would carry out. The answer would be colonoscopy. Why? To rule out colon cancer. Now for the treatment, for enterococcal ones, if it's sensitive to vancomycin, in other words, non-VRE, we will give ampicillin or vancomycin. If it's a VRE, then we give linozolid or daptomycin. For streptococcus bovis, we give penicillin or cephalosporin, ceftriaxone or dentamycin. All right, so we've covered everything. Let's just have a quick review of the high yield points before we finish. Gamma hemolytic strep show no hemolysis on blood agar. They're divided into two groups, enterococcal, which grows in 6.5 sodium chloride, and non-enterococcal, which does not grow in 6.5 sodium chloride. The main thing we worry about with enterococcal species is vancomycin-resistant enterococci, also known as VRE, and for streptococcus bovis, remember that it causes endocarditis and has a very strong association with colon cancer. And that's it for gamma hemolytic streptococci. We hope you found it beneficial. Don't forget to like, 
share, and subscribe to receive our latest updates. And as always, thanks for watching. See you later.